But anyway, so I asked Lloyd what I needed to do to prep him, if there's anything I could do to help him. And I'm going to let him come talk, but if you would, bow with me. We're going to pray for him right now. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for this glorious evening to be able to share a great testimony from a great man. We pray that you just give him all the words and knowledge he needs to present it as everybody would understand. We pray you just keep us all safe and healthy. And we love you, Jesus, because we know you got us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Lloyd, you're up, buddy. Let's hear it for Lloyd. <laughs> there you go. Bring him on up here to me, Kelly. Hello. Hello. First and foremost, we just want to say uh, to God be all the glory for everything, right? And uh, uh, how much of an honor and a privilege it is to ever stand before God's people. Uh, I don't believe that you can be in the presence of greater people than God's people. So if you don't mind, turn to the person next to you and do them like this. Amen. Uh, because everybody in the house of God deserves some honor. Amen. Because you're God's people. There's no greater people. Uh, we want to thank God also for uh, Pastor Riddle and his wife for uh, allowing us to be here. Um, all of the members of this church. And, uh, we give honor to uh, my pastor, Pastor Eric Beckham and, and Lady Beckham. Amen. God bless them for being here and all of the dogs from CIC. Amen. Amen. All of them. And uh, uh, Darren and Jack, who work with me, God bless y'all. They came. And you see the judge. I'm not going to start naming everybody. Amen. And, uh, and not only my boss, but a mentor, uh, Brother Moose Brewer. Amen. I thank God for him. Amen. It's amazing sometimes uh, how when you don't believe much in yourself, how other people's belief in you can inspire you. And uh, brother Jack, there, and uh, inspire you and, and just push you, propel you to do things. Amen. All right. So uh, let me go into my testimony. It's it's nothing big, nothing major. I'm in a crowd with everyone that's pretty much familiar with uh, everything that I can talk about. Let me say this. Uh, I've always been a nerd. Amen. I, you know, in my mind, I'm a cool nerd, though, in my mind. But I've always been a nerd and always thought different. Uh, I can remember being five years old, sitting out on the steps trying to talk to God. Then I had no idea calling that was on my life, but I was sitting out and I'd look at the clouds then at five years old and I'd be saying, God, show me something. Let, let me see your finger in the clouds. Y'all ever did that? <laughs> well, I was doing stuff like that at five, six. Uh, I never really fit in, uh, so uh, because I wanted to fit in so much, I became a great actor. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Do you just get you fit in? I tell people I'm a better actor than Denzel Washington. I could play every role I needed to play. If I needed to be the cool guy, I wanted to, if I wanted to be a thug, if, if I wanted to be tough, uh, affiliated with gangs, I'm so drug. I've done it all. I've done it all. Uh, I've done it all. Amen. Been there, done that. Uh, because I wanted to impress people. Wanted people to, I wanted to just fit in. Everybody likes to be loved, right? And everybody likes to feel included. Amen. So uh, I would do things and get involved in things that caused me to not be who I am. Amen. Anybody ever, have you ever 
lived a life and it wasn't really you. And you were trying to fit in with everybody, trying to say what everybody else wanted to, uh, to hear. You tried to wear what they wanted to wear, go where they wanted to go, do everything they wanted to do just because you wanted to fit in. Well, I'm finally in a place in my life now where I don't care if I don't fit in. Amen. I just have to be who I am. Uh, going into drugs and all of this type of stuff, I was miserable. I don't know about y'all, but I mean miserable. Uh, I would hang out, and then I would go home, lay down, and I would get in the bed and cry like a baby. I'm telling you, that's my, I told y'all, I'm not tough. I'm not tough. I try to act tough, don't I, Joy? Uh, but I'm not tough. I'm not a tough guy. Not, not, not in those regards. I would cry and I would ask God, why? Why? What's wrong with me? Anybody ever done that? Come on now. Come on now. When nobody else is looking, nobody else is around, your homeboy is not there, and you lay there and you just say, what? I just, I would cry, 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 cry. So, doing all of this, and God saved me. Just like that. Saved me. Took everything away from me just like that. Blessed me. Owned a business for about 26 years. Successful. Went into pastoring. Uh, pastor for years. Y'all don't think too bad of me. Uh, pastor. Successful pastor. Uh, educated man. Uh, that doesn't mean anything. I'm just saying how God blessed me. Uh, preached all over the United States of America. Just telling you the truth. Uh, all over the United States. And for what I, that's what I'm telling you. My testimony is it's just it just is what it is. I I uh, got beside myself. You know. Sometimes I think we can be lifted up in pride and don't even realize it. And I can tell you this now. Let me tell everybody. God will not share his glory with no man. I don't care how blessed you are. I don't care how anointed you are. I don't care, I, I don't care how charismatic you are, how gifted you are. Uh, it does not matter. God will not share his glory with any man. And God resisted the proud. But he giveth grace unto the humble. I didn't even know I was prideful. And uh, uh, some ton of events happened in my life. And when they happened, I felt like, now you hear me say I, right? And I'm going to tell you right now, the Bible says, put no confidence in your flesh. I know this is my testimony, but I just have to be me. I can't testify without giving you scripture because that's part of who I am. So when I say I get prideful, my pride was I felt like because the, the way I was living, how godly I was, that I should be impervious to certain types of hardships. I felt like me and God are cool. Uh, you know, God is my homeboy and some stuff is not going to happen to me. And when things started to happen to me, I lost my mind. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now. And I had a grudge against God because I can think of about 973,000 people that you ought to kill before my father. I'm just telling you the truth. That's how I felt. And, you know, you don't want anything bad to happen to anybody. But my father was a good man in my eyes. So I got mad at God about that. I got, my grandson got cancer. I was mad at God about that. Um, so I started getting depressed. And now keep in mind, I had 17 years sober. 17 years sober. I got depressed. I got down in the dumps. And instead of praying like I should have been, doing, I was mad at God. I'm not talking to you. Y'all like to talk to people you mad at? I'm not talking to you. I'm not getting on my knees. I'm not reading your word anymore. 
I'm just not going to do it because I'm upset. I was having a grown man tantrum. Any of y'all have had a grown man tantrum before? Well, you just lose your mind and just act crazy. So I had a grown man tantrum, but this is my testimony now. But how many of you know that who the Lord loves, he chases? If he loves you, he chases you. And so I got beside myself and I decided, well, I know how to deal with depression. I know how to get out of the bed. I know how to stop being sad. I know what to do. And the party was on. Still pastoring, still running the business. Y'all, please don't think too bad of me. But if you do, this is just the truth. Oh, God, alive. I was mad at God. I would preach. I wouldn't read my Bible, wouldn't do nothing. I'd go in and preach, and tons of people would come and get baptized and give their life to God. And that made me even mad. That made me even mad. Because here I am trying to do anything in my power to put distance between me and you. And you're constantly showing me that I'm God and I'll do whatever I want to do whenever I want to do it, and however I want to do it. Amen? So, I'm miserable. I'm miserable. I'm absolutely miserable because I know God. I know the word of God. I know how God can bless you. I know how God can cover you. I know how sweet he is. I know how gentle he is. I know how kind he is. I know how forgiving he is. But I'm mad at him and upset with him. Well, needless to say, he showed me how to cow to the cabbage. It did not work out good for me at all. Remember, God resists the proud, but he giveth grace unto the humble. So here I am lifted in pride. Did y'all know VTN, the Victory Television Network? Here I am, I'm being interviewed by Happy Caldwell. Interviewed, I'm, I'm about to start uh, a drug program at the church. Pride, pride. Next thing I know, I'm arrested. Name is flashed all across the United States of America. All different types of things. Wife gone, business gone, church gone, everything gone, money gone, everything gone. And then, after a while, now listen, listen to me now. This took a while because I'm one of those hard. Am I talking to any more hard-headed people in here? I'm I'm, come on, y'all. I'm, I'm talking hard-headed. I'm one of those hard-headed ones. And have y'all ever seen, this is the cowboy church, right? So I can use one of those analogies. Have y'all ever, ever saw a cowboy movie where it's somebody that they, they, they need to punish? And... They get a horse, they tie the person's ankle, tie their boot <laughs> to the horse, and slap the horse on the rear end, and the horse takes off running through the prairie or whatever and just beating the mess out of them. <laughs> well, I feel like I got entangled with the devil. I did. I did. Wrapped my leg up in there, riding him, and he threw me off the horse. And I was surprised when, why is it that we act like we surprised when everything goes awry in our life? All of a sudden, we look at like, how did this happen? I can't believe this happened to me. I can't believe, well, you know what you did. I know what I did. So here I am now, and... <laughs> Uh, Satan has done what he's supposed to do. That's the tricky thing about Satan. He, 
Do you know what he does? He lures you in. He just lets you have all the fun and everything you want for a while. Do what you want. Go head on. We buddies. We cool. Everything is all right. And then, when you least expect it, boom. So he said, now I got you. Threw me off the horse. Now, I'm not talking about being saved. Uh, when we get saved, you're saved. I understand that. But I am saying this. The Bible says that the way of a transgressor is hard. I, I need every last one. This is, this is to sober you up. You cannot live any kind of way and think you're going to have a gravy lifestyle. I, I just need to tell you that now. So that way, when the bottom falls out on you, you've been told. You, you, you always have to look back and say, he told me. So, but that's not going to happen to any of us because we're not hard headed anymore. So here I am. I've entangled myself and now he's thrown me off. And I feel like God said, okay, now I'm going to chase you because the devil has to do what he says to. And I feel like God slapped the butt of that horse. Bow! You wanted to ride with him? Go head on for a while. Drug, anybody feel like they've been drugged through some bad roads? I, does, I mean, does anybody really feel like they have been drugged down some bad roads that hurt bad and you don't even know how you made it. I'm going to tell you how you made it because the hand of God was on your life. His hand was on your life and he allowed you to wind up where you are now. Amen? Amen. So now I want to talk about where I am now. I want to talk to you about it too before I close. This is part of my testimony now. What I would like to tell each and every one of you own the moment. Own this moment. Right and wrong decisions at critical times in your life. This is a critical time. This is not a time to just play. This is critical. And the decision that you make now will affect the next 15, 20 years of your life. How many of you can agree with me that decisions you made 10, 15 years ago is what brought you here now? Is that real? So that's why Pastor, I've made up in my mind that I'm going to own every moment of my life from now on. And I need for you to know this. How many believers are there in here? If you are a believer, then God has given you the power to own the moment. He says, Behold, I give unto you power over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world. Amen? He's given you that power. Now, you have to own the moment. The Bible says this. Be not deceived. Make sure the person around you is awake. Look at them and tell them, Be not deceived. Come on now, you got to talk to him. Tell him, be not deceived. God is not mocked. You're not going to end up laughing at God at the end. Be not deceived. Do you know the most dangerous person on the earth is a deceived person? Because when you're deceived, you actually believe that what you're saying is true. So you will be letting foolish babble come out your mouth trying to convince somebody else of something that's not even real. The Bible says, let God be true and every man be a liar. This is where I'm at now. I'm holding that word now. Be not deceived, for God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, 
that shall he also reap. How many of you now are reaping in the garden of the seeds that you sowed? Amen? Now let's flip the script on the devil. I'm excited about the fact that God is not mocked. I get happy about that. You know why? Because if, if the Bible is true, and God is not mocked in every seed that I sow, I shall reap. Then that means the fact that I'm standing here now is proof of the law of sowing and reaping. So therefore, I'm excited about doing good now. Because God will not be mocked. And if I turn my seed sowing around and start sowing seeds the exact opposite of what I did before, then that means this time next year, I'll be sitting in a completely different atmosphere than what I created for myself. But you have to own the moment. Every, every moment that comes up, you have to own it. When it's a moment that you could flip the script and go off, you got to say, peace be still. If it's a moment when you can get all the way down, you have to think the joy of the Lord is unspeakable and full of glory. Come on. Yes. Yes. You have to think if I delight myself also in the Lord, he shall give me the desires of my heart. Are y'all with me? See, I, I like to give words. I want to give you some promises. The, uh, Proverbs 16 and 7 says, when a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. How many of you need some stuff like that? Amen? Amen. The Bible tells us this as I close. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, you will reap if you faint not. Does it get, some of us tell the truth, sometimes you get tired of always taking down and taking the low road, don't you? Sometimes you want to act the fool, don't you? Sometimes you want to just give up and say, I'm done and I can't fight it no more. But guess what? Hold on. Your due season is coming. Keep on praying. Keep on taking advice. Keep on humbling yourself. The Bible declares God resists the proud, but he giveth grace unto the humble. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt you in due season. My name is Lloyd Master Jr., and I am becoming complete in Christ. Yeah.